Welcome back to the expansion of consciousness. I'm your host, Jason Medlock, and we're in season five, uh, and we're already on the second episode, uh, and this is wonderful. Um, um, and it was good to have a break and you know, take a break and then kind of reflect uh, on season four and all the wonderful coaches we had on, mindset coaches, uh, hypnotherapists, uh, people who work with uh, astral projection. We had uh, people who uh, work with stress. Uh, uh, we had mental health experts. All of these individuals were dedicated to expanding the person's consciousness who they're working with, to helping people have a breakthrough moment. And today I'm honored to welcome Dr. Carolyn Fisher to the Expansion of Consciousness podcast. And Dr. Fisher is a trained medical doctor who made the transformative decision to pursue rapid transformational therapy. And most of us know it as RTT. After experiencing firsthand the life-changing power of working with the subconscious mind, and we know what the subconscious mind is on this show, and having spent in traditional therapy, um, it, it just wasn't um, until she discovered RTT that she began to see profound shifts in her own life, which led her to, led her to become a certified RTT hypnotherapist. As a leader in the field of hypnosis, Dr. Fisher combines cognitive coaching hypnosis to create customized sessions that address a wide range of challenges from anxiety and childhood trauma to weight loss and confidence building. Trained by the renowned Marissa Peer, she brings a long lasting change. Today we'll explore how her methods transform lives and, and learn more about the incredible potential of RTT therapy. Without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Dr. Fisher. Hey, Doc, how are you today? I'm well. Thank you so much for this beautiful introduction. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, I want to make sure that, um, you know, I really, really kind of read some of the things you had out there and, uh, you know, uh, did you a service so I can encapsulate all the beautiful modalities that you've uh, that you work with. And also you've had a you, you and you continue to have a successful uh, a medical doctor career, but when you combine those two together, you start to become superwoman. You start to you start to be able to look at it from both sides, and I think that's awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah. I actually wanna. So that was my miss. You know, me misinforming you or not um, being uh, clear, because I don't work as a doctor anymore. I work as an RTT hypnotherapist now. Awesome, but I awesome. As a doctor, just I got to you. be clear. I know, I know. And but you did start your career as a medical doctor. And yeah. I want to know what inspired you to shift towards uh, rapid transformational therapy um, and, and, and focus on the subconscious mind, the subconscious healing. Well, I always was into alternative healing methods since mm -hmm. I was uh, even before I was in med school, honestly. And so I was always open to that. But I think I wanted to go more. I felt more safe in a more traditional route. So I would never have just done hypnotherapy i mean i i wouldn't also have known how to get there without it but i just started the traditional route but i was always interested in the alternative ways you know and explored that but it was only after i moved here i actually um uh, yeah um made that decision because i saw what a profound impact it had on me and uh, yeah, then I just, I guess I had the courage to say, no, I want to do this now, right? And uh, because with this, I really feel so, I'm so in it, right? Because I, it helped me so much, right? And I transformed my life and I know I can help people do exactly the same, right? And it made me so much freer and happier and healthier. And so there was not even like, I didn't even think about the cons, right, of just pursuing this now. Uh, I just um, started my business and never looked back, really. Uh, so nice. there was, yeah, there was a moving away from when I came here, right? Uh, it was kind of like a time out and a fresh start. And I, um, yeah, and then when I, when I started again into the healing path of mine, it was clear I wanted to work with the subconscious. 
working with the subconscious mind, Boris Cannon would, would, uh, would always say the subconscious mind is just another layer of who we really are. And uh, I'm so excited that you are practicing a fantastic and a uh, wonderful form of hypnosis. And um, I don't know, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm a quantum healing hypno hypnotherapist. Um, and obviously that's the Dolores uh, Cannon School of Hypnosis. And Amazing. not just mine. We could we could go on for hours talking about the beauty of the subconscious mind and the way you can affect it. And I'm just so interested to have this conversation with you because when I start to do my research on you, I'm like, yes, I have someone that I can just really talk to Amazing. and understand the process. And then in that, we help others understand what you do and, um, and, and it may bring some sort of healing to their life. But I want to ask you, can you explain what the inner child work mm -hmm. involves and how is it powerful? Um, um, well, how is it a powerful tool for healing emotional wounds that people have? So I'm going to start with the second question first. How is it powerful, right? Yes. So, I mean, we know, but I, I, I still say it, that we all have all our inner children and all our younger selves in us, right? The five-year-old me is still in me. Just it, it didn't just leave when I turned six, right? The 15-year-old is still in me and so on. So, but sometimes, right, in different stages of life, we either experience overwhelm or trauma, or we just mis misinterpret things, right? But we take a belief away from that, that is not helpful to us, that is not making us feel better, right? And that might do the opposite, right? So that belief stays with us, right? And it stays in our subconscious, right? We don't have access to it, really. We might not be even aware of it, right? on a conscious level. And so that's why the inner child work is so powerful. Inner child work is so powerful in this because through hypnosis, through hypnotherapy, you can access exactly those parts of you that are that inner child, right? That are that younger self that experienced those things, that took on those beliefs. And exactly where you took on the beliefs you can also change them right transform yes. them and yes. only there right because otherwise they will always overwrite everything your brain says right because your brain might say well that's not smart but you know that pattern says that's just what i do right it doesn't matter like i guess i don't know if everybody but a lot of people can probably relate that sometimes we know what's good for, for us and we don't do it. We do the opposite, right? Or we do something else. Yes. And often it's really this that we know what's good, but we are driven by something that's so much more powerful because it has that emotional charge. And I'm so like, yes. that's why the inner child work is really so um, powerful and how to access it, right, is really through going into that subconscious and really... Um, digging it up or I, I don't even want to say dig up because it just comes so easily right the right scene that that we want to see that has to do with the issue we want to work on right and then we really connect or we feel ourselves as that child again as that younger self and in that state we can so easily transform it right because i and that's one of my favorite things to say you we can never go back and change what happened, right? But we can go back to that inner child, to that younger self, and transform what it made us believe about ourselves or about life. And that's actually really the same for the present moment. Hmm. Awesome. And I know that you, you're not saying this indirectly, but you, you know, you're doing a little past life regression therapy there, uh, which is an amazing tool within uh, the process of moving someone back to that day. And I know that when we are working in this quantum hypnosis, that person actually takes on the characteristics of this five-year-old or, or this four-year-old or even another past life that they've lived so that we can figure out where did this trauma start? 
And I just commend you for the type of work that you're doing. I mean, it's absolutely credible <laughs> and, it, and it actually helps people grow and overcome these blockages that they have. Thank you so much. I mean, yes. honestly, past life regressions, I would like to interview you for that. Right, because then <laughs> Dolores Cannon, uh, she's amazing, right? On on um, those teachings, also, yeah. You know, it it really, you know, how you can watch someone on YouTube, or you just kind of, you know, keep on seeing it, and you're like, oh, I would love to do that, and that's how I was, <laughs> and and once I got into it, you know, then I got to be a level one, and I got to be level two, and I was so amazed, I was so amazed, Doctor Fisher, at the connection the brilliance of the subconscious mind and being able to speak with it. I, 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 this is another show. We'll do that later. But, but I know that you've had, you've had personal experiences to overcome. You had this trauma and this neglect. And can you tell the audience how that journey has shaped how you approach RTT and the emotional healing for your clients as well? Yes. I think I have gained tremendous empathy through that and understanding, really. Yes. Because although one life is only one life, right? But in the sense of experiencing trauma, experiencing neglect, even if it's a different kind of um, neglect, trauma, or even abuse, it's still, you know, there are still is a common understanding or a common, yes. you know, um, empathy also. And I think that really uh, helps me connect with my clients. Um, and just also the transformation, right, that I experienced. Like before I had trans transformed and felt those transformations, I just, you know, I thought this is it, right? Just gaining more awareness, right, right. which is the first step. But then when I transformed, you can't, ex I can't really, I could not explain transformation before it didn't happen to me, right? Because okay. how do you want to explain something that didn't happen to you, right? And it's really so empowering and so, so life-changing that I can hold space for that, for the transformation to happen, right? Yes. And yes. for that to even often I see it happening, right? I see it before it happens and it's so beautiful, right? Because you really see that the energy transform. And so I think that holding space, I think is really that, um, yeah, that uh, that thing that is, um, is maybe the most important thing. Like I'm just thinking now, right? A coach, if I want to learn how to swim, I learn to swim with someone that knows how to swim, right? Not right. only can they show it to me, but they also can be here for me when I'm doing it, right? And cheer me on and hold that space and, you know, and not be overwhelmed, right? Uh, by me being able to swim then, right? So I think, um, yeah, because I think people that haven't gone through something similar, they can be, they can mean well but they can still be overwhelmed, right? That's often the case with well-meaning family or friends, right? They can be overwhelmed and that not be able to hold the space if you're overwhelmed, right? Right, right. So I think that's the main thing. Right. And, you know, I was just thinking that this rapid transformational therapy is pretty much known for creating this fast and this lasting change. Uh, can you share a success story where RTT maybe profoundly impacted one of your clients or yourself or someone else's life? Sure. Um, I like that you said rapid, lasting change, because I think people often with rapid think, well, it can't last then, right? If it's rapid. Yes. And the beauty in this is really that it's rapid and lasting. And Marissa even says that at one point, she says, you know, often we give people that had a traumatic or hard upbringing or even like a hard phase in their life, in their lives, the feeling that now they need to go through a lifelong of therapy, right? And you're punishing them basically for already having had a hard time. And she said she didn't want that, right? She wanted a fast, uh, a rapid change. And so I really think this is so beautiful because it means you're not doomed just because you had a hard time, right? And um, 
So, um, what I want, so <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is actually um, that um, the, the the example, right? So I always say transformation is guaranteed because it's not me, right? It's the tool that I'm using, and the tool is built to give you a transformation. So you will go out with a transformation. And my clients mm -hmm. always leave with a transformation, right? And there are many success stories, but I want to, yeah, I want to point one out where um, a client came to me and they were overeating. You know, they knew exactly, I mean, most of us know, right, what is good, what is bad for us, how much we should be eating. And that client always found themselves eating at night especially right and um it was just like they couldn't stop themselves right and and what i also find it's so interesting that often people are like oh i just need discipline i'm like no you have a phd you have a doctor's degree or you have this you have three kids that you raised how are you telling me you need discipline like all that that you have already accomplished takes discipline so you cannot say you don't have discipline right you're misinterpreting this so we found out then through the work, right? There were scenes coming up where the mother of the client, right, would really show him affection and talk so proudly of them when they ate all, when they finished the plate, right? Or when they took the food and ate all of it. So for them, like getting attention and getting affection and getting a love was connected almost solely with food. So we had to reframe for him that a touch and the word are felt as love, right? Because they are, and we know that. But if you are not wired like that, right, yeah. then that's what is love. And so as soon as we really transformed that, right, and he could give that back, that what he internalized, what he had internalized a long time ago, that immediately changed, right? Because then they didn't need to eat anymore. To get that love because they could now take the love from their spouse that they gave by other things and they had always given they had always known that there was never a doubt right but perception right their own perception changed wow wow you know dr fisher i was reading that you integrate astrology modern spirituality human design into all of your sessions I'm wondering how do these modalities complement RTT in that the emotional healing uh, in your practice? You know, I actually uh, wrote that there because I, I'm not trained in any of those modalities, but I wanted to signal with that, that I am really, although having a scientific background and hypnosis being totally scientifically proven, I have, I'm really open and I really uh, believe that there are uh, truths in all of those modalities, but I don't really incorporate them actively. But I think passively within perceiving, with in receiving a client, I uh, do that. And if they wanna, you know, explore that more or talk more about that, right? Then right. I'm there. I'm open. I can hold space. But that's not actively. I'm not actively. Um, using any of those modalities. Okay, okay, but 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 in your work with clients, I mean, uh, can we just talk about some of the common challenges that they face um, when you're trying to actually access the subconscious mind for healing? And you know, once you're there, are are you able to, or how do you help them? Not are you able to, but how do you help them overcome obstacles once you have access to their subconscious? Uh, mine and you know uh, obviously there are challenges i even have challenges when i'm trying to get to a person's subconscious mind because you know obviously we have a left brainer do we have the right brainer mm -hmm. you know the left side of the mind is um you know uh, more um question based and they're more structured and mm -hmm. they want to know am i hypnotized yet <laughs> uh i don't feel it you know no you're not going to feel it just yeah. right i like right brainers you know, creative side of the mind, the pictures, the colors, mm -hmm. uh, the wonderful things. So I guess I'm just asking, you know, what are some of your common challenges that you face when you're trying to access the subconscious mind for the hill? 
Thank you for that question. You know, I think a lot of people that come for hypnotherapy, I think that's not a modality that you consider immediately on issue if you have an issue. So usually they are open because they know exactly what they in, or not exactly, sorry, but they are open to something that they might not be so um, understanding of maybe even. Um, so I have not had people that really couldn't be, you know, uh, put under hypnosis, but I've definitely had people come say, you know, my, you're my last resort. I never wanted to do hypnotherapy. I never thought about it, but now I'm really open. And I usually also in every consultation or before the consultation, or if somebody books immediately a session, I send a introductory recording out. It's eight minutes of my voice inducting you into hypnosis. Because some people really believe it's some kind of voodoo state, right? Where they've never been and where it's like, you know, they either, like you said, am I already there? That feels too normal. I'm not there yet, right? Or, you know, they expect something totally outside of anything they've ever felt. So I sent that. And I said, the only thing you need to actually feel is more relaxed. If after the eight-minute recording, you are not more relaxed than at the beginning, then let's revisit and let's talk again before we do a session, right? And that has not happened yet, actually. I mean, I'm knocking on wood, hopefully never, right? But then I uh, will figure out a way. So, um, yeah, that had um, that has really not happened that I feel like they are not um, there. I've had... Yeah. You know, I've had twice I've had people sleep, fall asleep, mm -hmm. and I couldn't wake them anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is what I've experienced. Mm. But that they couldn't be there, right? But for everybody, it feels different probably. Or for everybody, it's perceived differently. Or they, they I observe them differently, right? Or, or I see something different. Like some might might be more more relaxed than others but uh so far you know they all accessed really their subconscious you know I, you know if i can add to that uh, one of the things that i'm really really careful with is my intake mm -hmm. yeah. when we i i just try to figure out the person during the intake period to just see if we're going to be a good fit and i never want to try this i don't even know if it's going to work and it's not going to work. <laughs> so maybe find someone else that can work with you. And I think that you maybe, you know, you'll find that. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> but so you have to be careful, in my opinion, with the intake and uh, just trying to understand who you're working with. And some of the other obstacles, like if I can add to what you said that I've seen um, is people expecting to be hypnotized. Um, and that's the wrong way to look at it. Uh, you should expect to relax and be in a comfortable space and enjoy the fact that you have nothing else to do but just relax. And when you put it to a person that way, this is your time to just be peaceful and quiet. They tend to say, okay, let's relax. Now, um, once I get past that intake, then we have this conversation uh, in quantum hypnosis, no less than two hours because we want that trust. No one, you can't access anybody's subconscious mind without trust. Any hypnosis session, regular clinical hypnosis without trust. And once we can get the trust of these clients, then we can do, we can work miracles for them, Dr. Fisher. I mean, just miracles. Um, I've had people that, have gone through the two hour um, uh, initial phase of conversation of finding out what the problem is. I've had them under and then they just popped out. And those people I find still, even though they were in a deep state of theta, they still were trying to control the session and trying to figure out what's going on. And then yet when they pop out, then I do a meditation with them and I move them back slowly and continue to, and then get them back in. 
And for all intents and purposes, Dolores Cannon would tell us on video because she's passed away, wear them out with conversation. You have to continue to talk to them to wear them out so that the left side of the brain will cannot it's, be in control. Uh -huh. So, you know, I just love to just just adding on to what you're saying on some of the things that I've experienced. And, you know, then I'm able to get there and then to get them then to now solve some of the issues that they wanted to solve. Because like you said, we cannot heal you. We facilitate. We're the bridge between you and the subconscious mind so that the subconscious mind can do the healing, which is the person, your higher self. So it's always great to compare notes um, you know, when, when we're doing this kind of work, because you will run across some people that will be a little challenging and, um, you know, those, those people in particularly are left brainers and they just want to be in control. Totally. Yeah, I agree. And I actually, now that you were talking, I think, so I do a consultation first and once you agree to work with me, then I do the intake. Yes. So I think with me, it's at the consultation, they would then decide not to work with me because I'm very clear at the consultation that this is not like you lie there and I just do the work. Like you're not under, I mean, you are under if you want to call hypnotherapy or hypnosis to be under, but your consciousness is not knocked out, right? So at least how I work, right? Or how we work with our TT and I, yeah, and I speak, speak, I think I speak for you too, but like you said, a bridge or a guide through your subconscious, but you're going to do the work. You're going to need to say those words, right? You're going to let that inner child speak. So that's all your work. I'm empowering you. I'm helping you. I'm holding space. And so I make that very clear, clear in my consultations. And it's definitely that then, I mean, not everybody that has a consultation with me comes for a session. So maybe that's where my, that weeding out happens that would weed out the people that, would not you know uh, would want to control right or would want because they or would want to just not need to do anything right so um i'm, yeah, I'm on the same page with you i do the same thing some people don't come back some people after that consultation they don't yeah. <laughs> they keep looking you know <laughs> yeah and, and you i'm sorry go ahead no 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 and i think <laughs> that's totally normal also yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned um, the inner child, but that inner child work can be very emotionally intense. And I, I'm wondering how do you got your clients through the process of revisiting past trauma uh, in a way that feels safe and nurturing to them? I mean, it's. I think it's really what you said before, right? Trust. So yes. um, I think establishing the trust that starts with the consultation and then gets uh, stronger with the intake and then, you know, with the session, with the first part of the session where you still talk with them and find that, I always say, finding the deepest conscious understanding of the issue, right? And it's really through the trust, I would say, right? And then we go in with a question and then the subconscious just comes with the answer because we trust that also, right? It's not only trusting me, but you're trusting your own subconscious too. You're trusting yourself, right? Yes. So I think it's all through trust. That's Beautiful. why it's so important. Beautiful. And, you know, again, on this same topic, I know that you've probably had some clients that had a ton of misconceptions about hypnotherapy. And I'm wondering, how do you educate clients on the real potential of RTT hypnotherapy? Hmm. Well, I always uh, try to explain it. I, I hold it with that quote. I'm sure you've heard it. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you haven't understood it enough. So I really always try to explain it so uh, simple, you know, uh, mm -hmm. no fancy words. And uh, yeah, that's my concept that's, uh, that I really, and I think once you understand it, right, or once you can grasp it, then you, you're probably more trusting it or more open if it's for you. Mm. Well, Dr. Fisher, as someone who offers these virtual sessions globally, how do you maintain a personal and connected experience for the clients, you know, regardless of their location? That's a, such a good question. Well, um, you know, I, 
that might sound um sorry i'm looking forward it might sound a little bit like um maybe i don't want to say too spiritual because i don't think anything is too spiritual but i i think you really sense you know you sense uh, a spirit energy through um through a zoom call through a the space, you know, through mm -hmm. the distance. I, I even said that, you know, when the internet started, like a long time ago, or at least in Austria, started a little later than here, or to be popular, right? Yeah. And when I started talking to people from other places of the world, I, I could sense who they were, you know, like, you, I don't know, even chatting already. And for me, it was always, you know, I'm not saying I always was totally spot on with every person in my life, no. But I definitely, um, I think you can sense a, a, an energy of a person, intention of a person, right? Um, so that's why I never felt it was hindering me. I, I had an office for a while, but then through COVID shut it down. But even before I had the office, I was working virtually already because I didn't only work around here in New York, but um, it just always really worked well and I didn't, I didn't feel it was such a difference to work in person. Um, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't offer touch therapy. Mm -hmm. Our work is directly with the subconscious mind. So we don't have to be there with you. And healing energy is transferred through data lines. We don't, it's almost like the theory of the atom. If you throw, if, if there's one atom across the universe and the other, other atom is in our universe, they move simultaneously. So we know that we can deliver healing no matter where you are in the world instantaneously, just like that, because of this Christ consciousness, this connection that we're all, this, this, this theory that we're all connected with one consciousness. So um, transferring information, transferring healing, tra you know, because I'm a galactic energy healer as well. And it's, it's similar to Reiki. And we don't use, you know, the energy that's beaming from the earth, the uh, some of the, some of the Reiki energy that's beaming here to heal the chakras. In galactic healing, healing energy, we use patterns. We draw patterns and we push the patterns wow. through the screen wow. to the person on the other end. So I'm with you. Um, Exciting. You know, doesn't matter where you are. This this. This connection, this intuitiveness that you have with the person, uh, uh, this this spiritual connection, you can feel their energy and you can absolutely heal them. Yeah. I wish I had a podcast because just hearing those bits and pieces you give, sorry, bits and pieces, I would really love to interview you. Awesome. Just <laughs> caught my attention like this. I know. We just got to go offline and talk about it a little bit. Yeah. So. But looking forward, what is your vision for expanding the reach of RTT and the emotional healing practice to help even more people transition their lives? My vision, I think it's uh, it should really be a household thing, you know, like, um, yeah. Uh, I think my vision is that it should be so accessible. It should be. A normal thing right our subconscious everybody has one it's always yeah. there it's always on why are we not working with it right i think it should be taught in schools that's my vision yes yeah. and you know to piggyback on that um you know when i look at a modality like rtt or qhht it should be in the workplace it should be accessible to athletes. It should be accessible to anybody who's experiencing blockages or stress. Move it in the same realm as EFT tapping. Now they've accepted EFT yeah. tapping as a, oh, this is this is scientifically proven, <laughs> you know, when it's only acupun acupuncture, emotional freedom technique. And I use that uh, to help clients, uh, even in combination with hypnotherapy, I'll, I'll help them tap to relieve stress, to relieve these negative feelings that they have. So I just think that, you know, um, the evolution of hypnosis and moving from the woo-woo stage to a valid tool that can really, really heal a person by penetrating the subconscious mind and rewriting this old software. 
that we, you know, have in the brain. It's not all about healing sometimes. Sometimes it's all about changing habits using, yeah. you, you know what I mean, Doc? Totally. It's about awareness. I say, you know, there are two lines, or at least for me, maybe at one point I see five, right? But one is really like, okay, you want to heal certain things. You want to transform because there is some some pain or some block or something. Or you want to expand your mind, your 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 consciousness, actually, not your mind only, right? But your consciousness, like a psychoactive drug, right? Like hypnosis is that. You can do that with hypnosis. And I think also what you said, yeah, it should be accessible to everyone. And it should really, I feel like in schools, you know, you learn one plus one is two. And everybody's like, yeah, you know, you need to know that because it's so important. Yeah, that's your brain's intelligence. But we also need to focus on our body's intelligence. How do you feel? How do you feel in your gut when this or this happens? When the, you know, this is knowledge too that we need to um, really pay attention to and teach kids. It's so important, you know, what uh, like the world we could build. And when we did that in schools, right? Then of course it would be in every boardroom, right? Because then those t those students would go on and create that in the workplace too. So I wow. think it's really, um, yeah. Wow. Now let's talk about you, Dr. Fisher, a little bit more. Let's let's get into what are you offering to the people who are listening on the show. Give me your website. What mm -hmm. kind of programs do you have out there? Um, share with the audience, uh, you know, some of the things that you have for them to help them recreate or or live the life that they want. Mm -hmm. So my website is whyhypnotherapy.com. Okay. www dot y hypnotherapy.com y w h y and then i offer four programs including the free consultation i offer the classic three hour rtt session i offer that also on a monthly basis where it's a reduced price you get that once a month that three hour session and text and voice message support in between the sessions. And then I also offer a one hour session that I call emotional healing. So these are the four things I offer. And also on my Instagram, whyhypnotherapy.com, sorry, no.com on Instagram, <laughs> just whyhypnotherapy. I have, you know, quotes and just things that I think are so inspiring and are moving me further in my journey of learning more about the subconscious and about healing and um, living a healthier life in general. So I'm also putting it out there to inspire other people so they awesome. can be enriched too. Awesome. 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 Uh, thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, look at the screen, www.whyhypnotherapy.com www.whyhypnotherapy.com and you may be asking jason will you do hypnotherapy too no you have to share these practices because people resonate with um uh different people and that's why expansion of consciousness is a unique show we bring people on that do different types of modalities or working different types of modalities but it's all about trust dr fisher trust the client has to trust who they're with and it's our responsibility to share this information uh, so that people can uh, really, really uh, get the person that fits well with them. And that's why I wanted you on this show. And I'm excited that you uh, that you've come on and then enriched us with so many different uh, concepts and uh, ideas. I just really thank you. Do you have any last words that you would like to share with the audience? No, I mean, I, I really I am really touched by that sentiment, you know, because I knew you were a hypnotherapist and I also want to acknowledge that is, you know, generous. I think like that, too, because I think there's enough for all of us and we can actually, like you said, our conversation, our interaction can actually help us both grow also in our practice. Right. So it's um, adding it's a win win. That's how I see it. But I want to acknowledge that because that's not how everybody might be seeing it, right? And so, yeah, and, they, and, and you know, they don't have shows, so they <laughs> they don't have a concept. They're probably in a in a private practice, and they're trying to hoard information that's out there on YouTube, everywhere. It's all over the world. Hypnotherapy is used by a number of folks, and you can't hoard something that's out there. 
you have to share it and let's converse about it so that we can together open the eyes of the many people for the greater good of all. Totally. And wording takes so much energy also, right? Like, yes, wants- it does. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say uh, in this. I'm gonna uh, do an outro. Say some good things about you. I want you to hold on where you are. Don't go anywhere. And I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And yeah. one second. Yeah. Wow, Doctor Fisher, Doctor Carolyn Fisher. Listen, I want to thank you for joining us today, um, and the audience, um, and the insightful conversation and the transformative conversation that I've had with Dr. Fisher. Uh, She is absolutely wonderful. And her journey from the medical doctor field to RTT hypnotherapy, it shows us the power of healing through the subconscious mind, through inner child work, and the emotional healing practices that Dr. Fisher practices. And think about this, quantum healing hypnosis, uh, RTT hypnotherapy, um, was there, there's, there's clinical hypnosis, there's past life regression therapy. Who cares what works for you? Who do you resonate with? Because when you're working with a practitioner, you have to feel good about it. You have to feel comfortable about it and you have to have trust. And hearing how Dr. Fisher helps her clients overcome deep seated trauma and transform their lives through RTT hypnotherapy and using these uh, modern practices, uh, that's just amazing. But if you found today's episode valuable, then take the next step. And be sure to follow Expansion of Consciousness on your preferred podcast platform. We're here on YouTube, we're on Instagram. And share this episode with someone who could benefit from it and leave a review. Dr. Fisher and myself, we thrive on reviews. It gives us credibility even more credibility when you say that I've worked with them and they did a great job for me. And we love hearing from you anyway. So if you're curious about exploring RTT hypnotherapy, contact Dr. Carolyn Fisher, uh, whyhypnotherapy.com, or visit visit her online and just learn. Just learn about how her healing journey has brought her to where she is and how you can benefit from that. But until then, guys, stay tuned for more life-changing insights from our incredible uh, lineup of guests that we're going to have coming up in this season five, you know, 217 videos uh, that shows that we've done. And I want you to remember to keep expanding your consciousness. And the one last thing, trust, relax, and discover. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Good night. (laughs) 